All right. Thank you all for coming out tonight. We will open our meeting with a moment of silence. Please take this time to reflect on our schools and say a little prayer for our students and staff that's got three weeks of testing coming up. So let's have a moment of silence before we get started. Thank you. And now tonight for our Pledge of Allegiance, we have students from Joe Burns High School. Please stand. Salute, pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. If you'll tell everybody your name and what your position is at Joe Burns. Addison Gaines, I'm the student body president. Thank you, Addison. Uh, next, we have our mission and vision statement by Dr. Weeks. Our mission statement is that every student is prepared to succeed in life. And our vision statement is that all students will be enabled to reach and exceed high academic and career standards while empowering them to succeed in a technologically advanced and culturally diverse society. Thank you, Dr. Weeks. Board members, we have before us a consent agenda. Do we have a motion or discussion? Motion, motion to approve. Second. Right. Motion by Mr. Jeff White, second by Mr. Scott Rice. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed nay. Motion passes and the agenda is approved. Uh, item four, under staff reports and recommendations, we have recognition of student, teacher, and school achievements. Board members, uh, could we amend the agenda tonight to add item 6C? Uh, add item 6C, which would be to uh, consider the Innovation Academy bid. Motion to amend the agenda. A uh, motion for the uh, uh, addition to the agenda by Mr. Jeff White. Do we have a second? Second. Uh, second by Mr. Demetrio White. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed nay. And then if we could amend the agenda to add item 7C. And 7C would be to uh, extend the date of a policy. Ms. Dickerson will bring those policy numbers to us. That will be item 7C. Okay, so this is for the policy extension we discussed in the planning session. Um, all in favor for this addition say aye. Aye. Uh -huh. Opposed nay. Uh, let me get a motion and a second on that. Sorry. I'll motion. Uh, motion for Mr. Jeff White. Sorry. Second by Mr. Scott Rice. Motion passes. Added item 6C and 7C. All right. Thank you. Uh, board members, our recognitions tonight. First of all, I'd like to recognize Ms. Jennifer Smart. She is with our Mid-Cumberland West Regional Nutrition Department. She represents the State Department of Education and their efforts in nutrition. Ms. Thank you for being here with us, and we would invite you to the podium, please. Good evening. The Turn Up the Beat Award recognizes outstanding summer meal program sponsors across the nation who work hard to offer high quality meals to children that are appetizing, appealing, and nutritious during the summer months. Summer meals are critical in the lives of millions of our nation's youths whose risk for food insecurities increases during the summertime when there's no, when, I'm sorry, they no longer have access to the national school lunch program and the school breakfast program. Summer meal programs present the opportunity to help alleviate summertime food insecurities. USDA recognized 140 summer meal sponsors with Turn Up the Beat Awards for Excellence in program year 2023. 55 of those sponsors qualified for a gold award, 67 qualified for a silver award, and 18 qualified for a bronze award. This year, we would like to recognize and celebrate Patsy Gregory in Robertson County for winning a gold Turn Up the Beat Award. Thank you, Jennifer. My name is Randa Mead and I am the Senior Data at Senior Data and Compliance Manager with the School Nutrition Program. And I wanted to say a little bit about Patsy's program here in Robertson County. 
Last summer, they served 18,612 lunches, 16,040 breakfasts for a total of 34,652 meals across 18 sites throughout the county. They also operated what we call rural non-congregate feeding, which allows children to come pick up a meal and then take it away so they don't have to stay and eat the meal um, during a specific meal time. So we're very happy that Patsy in Robertson County has won the Gold Turn Up the Beat Award because they do awesome work. They work hard every day to feed kids and I hope several of y'all in here are participating in eating meals at Robertson County because I know they are very delicious. So Patsy. And you all, I want to speak for just a few minutes, and those who know me know I could speak forever about <laughs> school lunch. Um, our summer program during the month of June comes at a time when our employees are tired. I mean, they have worked from August to May serving meals, sometimes under very difficult circumstances. So we don't have as many people in the summer to feed students as we normally do. I've invited everybody that participated in the program last year to come tonight because you all, this is not my award by any stretch. This is an award that belongs to the school nutrition program. So, I mean, if you are here on behalf of school nutrition, you're kind of here anyway, but come on up because I want everybody to see you. Don't be shy. Come up here. <laughs> Represents. Our program really is made up of two kind of sort of different groups. We have our central office staff, and then we have our school staff. And anything we do that is successful has to involve both of those groups. And so tonight we have here with us people who work in the schools every day. We also have people here from our central office staff. And there's one person I want to ask to come up here, uh, really to receive this award on behalf of our program, and that is Amy Hassel. If you'll come up. <laughs> the Turn Up the Beat Award is really a puzzle. I mean, you have, it is, Amy can tell you, you have to put certain foods on certain days in certain orders, and during the whole month of June, it truly is like putting a puzzle together. And Amy worked long and hard to make the puzzle work, but you all beyond that, to win the award, you have to tell a story. And Amy was one of the most creative storytellers <laughs> I've ever seen. Uh, so really, Amy, on behalf of the district, this Thank is yours. You. Thank you. Ms. Gregory, thank you for your staff and thank you for all the work you do. I, I think we, and, and as our guests and our future recognitions, uh, we do have a professional photographer next door, so we would, uh, if you'd invite your, your staff and your guests okay. next door, we'll have pictures made over there. Thank you, ladies, for being here. Thank you all so much. And I Thanks, just Rob. have to say, in addition to that, we often say you cannot teach a hungry child, and so for the work that you all do every day, thank you to you and all of your staff. Board members, our second group of recognitions tonight. Uh, last, last month we recognized students in our middle schools that had achieved a, an award or an honor higher than a district or a county award. And so tonight, uh, Ms. Dickerson and Mr. Sarles are going to help us recognize high school students that have uh, uh, performed excellently and, uh, and were being recognized by their schools and by you as a board. Ms. Dickerson. Chairman Ayers and board members, it is my pleasure to bring more celebrations to you tonight and in particular honoring our students. And so for, with us tonight from East Robertson High School, we have three students who were able to join us tonight. 
And I would like to first of all tell you a little bit about Ida Bernard. Ida received all district team, all district tournament, first all county team. She also received an award or a certificate for earning 1,000 point score. She was a 1,000 point score for the season. So congratulations, Ida. I'd like to also recognize I Ike Bernard. Ike is being recognized for FFA Specialty Crop Proficiency Award. He is a state winner. <laughs> I'm wondering if Ida has his certificate. Okay. <laughs> yes. Kendall Brooks is also being recognized as a state FFA degree. The next school that we'd like to recognize is Greenbrier High. First, we'd like to recognize Ryan Seymour as a CEMC essay contest winner. Yay. Also, Ella Honeycutt, CEMC, CEMC essay contest winner. Next, Harold Ward is being recognized as an all-mid-state wrestler. And Will Kiefer as an all-mid-state cross-country runner. The next group we're going to recognize is Greenbrier High cheerleaders. The Greenbrier High School cheerleaders began their season by placing second at UCA camp this summer with eight All-American cheerleaders and two Pitt It Ford awards. After camp, they headed, headed to their first regional competition in Huntsville, Alabama, where they won first place at the Space Center Regional and earned the regional champion title. This first place finish earned them a bid to compete at high school nationals. They placed third in game day and third in traditional at the Tennessee Extreme Regional Competition. They placed seventh in the state of Tennessee at the TSSAA State Cheerleading Championship. The girls finished their season by placing top nine in the nation at the National High School Cheerleading Championship in Orlando, Florida this past February. They competed in the small varsity D2, is that right? Um, Non-tumbling division. They made it to finals in the traditional division, which is a program first for Greenbrier High School. So congratulations to cheer our cheerleaders from Greenbrier. I'm going, I'm going to first of all recognize the seniors in the group, Ashlyn Kelly, Ella Kate Bell, <laughs> sophomores Cheyenne Curry, <laughs> and Auburn Wilson. And freshman, Allie Murphy. Kate Doris.
Emily Henson. <laughs> Gracie Hayes. Lydia, Lydia, would you pronounce your last name for me? Bokesh, okay. <laughs> Madison Kelly. <laughs> Malin Wooden. Riley Maddox, and thanks to a friend, Cami Hammond. <laughs> Congratulations, Greenbrier High Cheerleaders. Next group we have is Joe Burns High School. Okay, first we're going to um, recognize the boys' basketball team for winning their district tournament. So our champions include Arnett Cotton. Keelan Clardy, Burton Cox, Bryson Douglas, Braden Little. and Preston Van Dyke. <laughs> Next, we have some recognitions for the FFA chapter. Um, they received the Superior Chapter Award, so congratulations. And officers include Maddie Head, <laughs> Cooper Johnson, <laughs> Abby Newberry. And I'd also like to recognize that Abby was a state finalist in Beef Entrepreneurship SAE. <laughs> Natalie Pettis. <laughs> and Hannah Williams. Coaches, if you'd like to step over, we'll get your pictures with your team. Anyone that had um, was there with Joe Burns. Weeks. This is Springfield High School, and representatives that have been recognized there. We'll begin with some uh, music and uh, band recognitions. We have Derek Davidson. Derek 
is an all-state tuba player for his third year in a row. Yeah. We also recognize tonight Yvette Garcia. Yvette is a mid-state flute player. Next two gentlemen represent our career and technical field. Uh, they have both completed internships with Gaylor Electric. Mr. Walker Weaver. And Noah Otten. Both Noah and Walker will now move on to apprenticeships with Gaylor Electric. Robotics team from Springfield High School who wind up being the quarter finalists in the state. This is Team Jaws. Gavin Boatman. <laughs> Jacob Henderson. Nathan Teague. And Jackson Bertrice. Again, robotics team state quarterfinalist. We also have another robotics team from Springfield High School, which was the state semifinalist. This is Team Rooster, Jacob Burnett. <laughs> Ibet Garcia. And Kevin Hake. Ladies and gentlemen, Team Rooster will also, as state semifinalists, be competing in the World Championship in Dallas, Texas. Congratulations. Yeah. A state future farmer of America degree, Allie Walker. Youth in Government Outstanding States Person Award, Ella Burke. There we go. Congratulations, Ella. And we have a female wrestler who was a TSSAA state qualifier, the first female medalist in state tournament. This young lady, this young lady finished fourth place in the TSSAA state tournament and is also being recognized tonight as a National Federation of High School Sports Athletic Award of Excellence. This is Micaiah Souza. Ladies and gentlemen, a round of applause for Springfield High School. And now the Patriots of White House Heritage High School. <laughs> we are recognizing as a CEMC calendar art winner, Miss Lily Bloodworth. Lily is also being recognized by earning the Future Farmers of America State degree as well. Congratulations. <laughs> Sailor Bernigy earned Future Farmers of America State degree. <laughs> Lucy Coffey the 2024 CEMC Scholarship winner. For Senior Beta, first place in Mixed Media Division, Darcy Dunnigan. I'm sorry, that's, that's Darcy Duncan. Darcy will also be representing White House Heritage in the district at the Nationals in June. Earning a Future Farmers of America State degree, Phoebe Hopper, Hooper.
Thank you, Phoebe. Wade Shepton, also earning Future Farmers of America State degree. The 2024 CEMC scholarship winner, Drake Sullivan. And all state choir from White House Heritage, Isabella Wiley. We also are pleased to introduce the boys basketball team from White House Heritage. They were the District 6AA tournament champions as well as Region 3AA tournament champions. Members of the basketball team include John Bale, Gordon Christie, Joshua Coles, Daniel Eden, Eric Lopez, Price Payne, Jeffrey Whitaker, and Trayton Wazinski. <laughs> Board members, this was White House Heritage High School representatives. Congratulations. Green tab, you will see the certified report. Uh, and would like to recognize these retirees. And just as a reminder, I'd also like to remind you we'll be having a reception for our retirees before the next board meeting. So at our main board meeting, we'll have a reception. Our certified teachers, Thomas Atkins from Joe Burns High School, Tammy Arnold from Phoenix Academy, Dawn Burnett, East Elementary, Robin Schote from Watauga, Kim Knight, East Elementary, Stacy Marlin, Heritage Elementary. I uh, would make a note of, you see the name of Martha Sue Stokes. Uh, she, she is with, we have accepted a withdrawal of her retirement, so she's going to remain with us. Uh, Marissa Toothman, East Elementary, Kevin White, Coopertown Middle, and Pam Williams from Watauga. So we congratulate these individuals upon reaching that milestone and making that determination for retirement purposes. Uh, you do also see several resignations leaves of absence which have been approved, transfers and new hires uh, on that certified teaching report. Uh, on the top of the next page you'll see a classified report and it would draw your attention to retirements there. Uh, I have tried to lose papers. I have tried to tear up papers. <laughs> I've done fortunately Miss Corbin. Uh, we have to approve these right? Yeah. Well, okay. <laughs> Uh, Scratch. I've, I've tried to talk her out of it. Miss Corbin, I think, has uh, found some grandmother love in, in her family and is going to uh, be spending some time taking care of her grandchildren at home and uh, working there. Uh, again, uh, I've tried to talk her out of it many times, but we're excited about the future that 
uh, that she has there would would appreciate it. Uh, again, we'll be uh, having something special for Miss Beverly at our at our main meeting. Uh, you also see at uh, Cooperstown Middle, Mr. David Hilliard is retiring. Uh, you see other uh, resignations, assignments, transfers, new hires, and you see some volunteer coaches there. All right. Thank you, Dr. Weeks. Um, does anybody have any questions or comments on the personnel reports? Moving on to item 6A, expense comparison report. Board members, item 6A, again, under the yellow-green tab in your packet, uh, you will see our 23 compared to our 24 uh, comparison statement as of February 29th. Uh, revenues uh, as of February 29th have come in at 98.9 million, which is up over last year's revenues. Our expenditures have been at 90.2 million, uh, and so you see a deficit there, uh, or excuse me, a positive uh, change there. Revenues over expenditures of 8.7 million dollars. In terms of revenues, our property taxes come in at 97% of our budget at 17.5 million, and our sales tax at 12.7 million. Those numbers are looking very strong, and we hope they'll continue to grow as we move throughout the year. The expenditures we track regularly uh, are electricity, diesel fuel, gasoline. All of those are slightly below last year in terms of both budget percentage and in terms of dollar amounts. Uh, you will see salaries, of course, are increased due to the changes that were made by the board last year and our insurance is up as well. All right, does anyone have any questions or discussion regarding the expense comparison report? And we will move on to item 6B, approval of PEPPM's marketplace solution bid. 6B is a purchasing cooperative type, uh, type of organization that Mr. Marshall has brought to us and would like to recommend that, um, that we participate in, uh, in accepting this as one of our purchasing options for uh, technology and technology-related equipment <laughs> and supplies. And so uh, after his reviewing of that, I would recommend that we participate in PEPPM as one of our purchasing options for technology purchases. Uh, board members, what's your pleasure uh, regarding item 6B? Uh, motion to approve. Motion by Mr. Scott Rice. Second. Second by Mr. Josh White. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed nay. Motion passes. And moving on to uh, item 6C, the Innovation Academy bid. Uh, board members, you have the bid packet. Uh, we are looking at the renovation of uh, Innovation Academy School. Uh, we'll open this item up for discussion. Dr. Weeks, if you have anything to add. Four items, uh, board members, item bid tab 1549 was opened last Friday uh, by our county finance office. We received three bids. Fellowship Construction, 5.9 million. Boger Construction, 6.2 million. And Orion Building at 5.5 million. And again, the renovations at IA uh, involved a lot of HVAC work uh, and, and quite a bit of plumbing and uh, work, work related to that. It's gonna be an extensive project that extends uh, from approval probably through most of the school year and we know there are going to be several inconveniences uh, due to plumbing situations and uh, it is critical that we get that work started so that they can at least uh, do as much of that during the summer as possible. Sir, sure. we'll have this item open for discussion if y'all have anything to add. Well, I'd just like to make a motion. motion if that's that's okay. fine. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> uh, motion by Miss Connie Hogan. Okay. Well, you want to hear it? <laughs> yeah, go ahead. Yes, okay. I'd like to make a motion that we approve the bid for IA from Orion which was, he said, at $5,520,586, and also that we authorize the administration to seek funding for this project. Yes, ma'am. Do we have a second? Second. Second by Ms. Demetria White. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Motion passes. And I just want to add that not long after I got on the board, I got to tour uh, Innovation Academy, and uh, uh, Tucker Osborne was taking me around the school, and I was excited to see robotics and all the stuff they did, and he said, first, I need to show you the bathroom. So uh, yeah. I'll give uh, Tucker credit for uh, showing me the issue right away. So we've been working on it since then. So I'm glad we got got this going. So thank y'all. And Ms. Ms. Hogan, if I could clarify your motion, it's it's for us as administration to seek the appropriate funding from uh, discussions either from fund balance or I from just bond said for issues. This project. Yes, ma'am. Okay. okay. So we'll we'll make the decisions and keep you as a board informed over go. which ones uh, in the best interest of the board. Thank you Sorry. for that. All right, thank you. All right, moving on to item 7A, Executive Committee Report from Moen. 
Board members, as you'll recall, uh, <coughs> during our previous board meeting, we approved one of our two vendors for lawn care services. Uh, they have an automatic increase in their, um, their bid and their contract that we have with them. Uh, after that board meeting was over, our second vendor came and, uh, and took advantage of his bid increase, uh, the increase to that. Uh, it was prior to this board meeting by about two weeks and I felt that we could not wait two weeks before we started mowing. Um, you know, once you get behind a little bit in mowing, it's tough to get caught up. So I contacted Chairman Ayers, and he and I, as your executive committee, uh, made that approval on 3-14-24. You will see the documents that we approved uh, in your packet. I did want to report that for transparency purposes and just as a, a good practice that, that I would like you to see followed through our administration. Uh, anytime we make an executive committee decision, I would like to report that to you. So I don't think that takes action on your part, but I did just want to, uh, to acknowledge that. And uh, if you'd like to affirm that vote, you're certainly welcome to do that. Uh, board members, what's your pleasure regarding this report? We don't need a motion, but if y'all have any discussion or questions, or are y'all good with it? Yep. All right, thank you. And I think all our mowing vendors, it looks great on my end of the county. So. That's really good. It hasn't always been that way. So. All right. Uh, moving on to item, uh, let's see, where are we at? Uh, 7B, approval of Bransford Elementary School name change. And Ms. Reeves, you still here? Yeah, would you like to tell us a little bit about the how you came to the, the name you got? I like it, but I know I'm a, yes, ma'am. First, I want to say thank you to the board for hearing our, um, our plea for the need to address the, the name at Bransford. Uh, we have several reasons for that that I described to you in October um, at a planning session. But for those who weren't in attendance, uh, we have in our school is, is a unique school because it's an early childhood focused school, which requires a special licensure for teachers. And so the number one reason is it's difficult to recruit teachers that, and staff members for teacher assistants that are interested in working with small children if your name says elementary school because elementary school implies that you're kindergarten through fifth grade which requires a different licensure than an early childhood licensure. So when our uh, school uh, wall outside our sign, our website says Bransford Elementary, people don't realize that we are early childhood and we need to be able to recruit more effectively and we felt like if our name would reflect that, that would help us. Uh, we also get lots of solicitations uh, almost daily from vendors who are wanting to sell us things that are appropriate for second grade to learn how to type <laughs> or fifth grade writing materials. And, um, it would, and when I tell them that we are an early childhood school, they, they don't believe me because on their paper it says I'm, that we're an elementary school. So it would help get us <coughs> off some of those um, vendor lists. But, um, that's how we've come here. We talked about the, the reasons in October. We have a leadership team at our school that has discussed this many times over the last several years and decided to bring it to you. And since October, we have um, met again with the leadership team. We've discussed um, and narrowed down to our um, the name that we felt like uh, described our school most effectively. We created a survey to survey our community stakeholders so that they, we could get input from the community, always wanting to honor that Bransford name because we um, we value the tradition of the community that we that we live in in the neighborhood, um, and over 90% of the respondents in our uh, survey just said that they agree with our choice of Bransford Early Learning School. We did receive some suggestions because we gave that opportunity to for the community to provide another name. Uh, we met again with our leadership team, talked about those choices, and um, decided that Bransford Early Learning School um, denotes that it is a school. It's not an early childhood center. Um, it's not privately funded. It's part of Robertson County School System, and it has a focus on early learning, and it is at Bransford. So that is kind of how we've come to this um, uh, meeting tonight with a request to officially change our name to from Bransford Elementary School to Bransford Early Learning School. Thank you. Right, board Does members? anybody have any questions? Have any questions or discussion? Motion to approve. Motion to approve by Mr. Jeff White. Second. Uh, second by Ms. Connie Hogan. 
All, all in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed nay. Motion passes. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Reeves. So can I just ask, have you looked for a sign yet, Ms. Reeves, or you? I mean, I mean. Now, now we got fun money. We, we <laughs> but I want Come to make sure she month, has money okay. for a sign, okay? <laughs> those, those little things are expensive. I know they are. And, uh, That's why I'm already, I've already discussed that with Dr. Weeks. Okay. And um, okay. we're going to get on a plan to do that tomorrow. Okay. Okay. Right. Sounds you. good. Thanks. <laughs> All right, thank y'all. Uh, moving on to item 7C, our policy extensions. Uh, Ms. Dickerson. Both policies 4.300 on extracurricular activities and 4.301 interscholastic athletics include the statement, the following statement. The addition of cheer and dance opportunities for homeschool students will sunset on July 1st, 2024. Based on discussion that, was, um, that took place during planning session, it is recommended that that statement remain in the policy and the date be changed to July 1st, 2025. Board members, do you have any questions or discussion regarding these changes? All right, so we'll be approving these on first reading and then again next month. Is that correct? That's your pleasure, yes, sir. All right, do we have a motion or discussion regarding uh, these changes for 4.300 and 4.301? So moved. Uh, moved by Mr. Josh White. Second. Second by Mr. Jeff White. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, nay. Motion passes on first reading. Thank you. And item 8A, approval of bid tab for Springfield High School intercom replacement. Board members, you see item 8A in your packet, bid tab 1547. Uh, Mr. Marshall has reviewed those bids and does recommend the uh, SG Network Services, 776290. Uh, did receive uh, <coughs> those bids and have reviewed those and looked at those. Uh, you see three bidders, base six, Beacon Technologies and SG Network. So SG Network below bid, 776290. Board members, do we have any discussion or a motion regarding the approval of bid tab 1547? Motion to approve. Motion by Mr. Scott Rice. Second. Second by Ms. Connie Hope. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed nay. Motion passes. Item 9, communications. Board members, I uh, would like to recognize Mr. J.R. Baker this evening. Uh, Mr. Baker, as you know, leads our fine arts department, and we've received notice for I know at least the second time I've had the privilege of announcing this, uh, that Robertson County has been recognized as a best community for music education. And so Mr. Baker, we're thankful for you and your leadership. We're thankful for our outstanding music teachers and music educators in our school system uh, and the commitment this board has made to contribute uh, to, to enhancing fine arts. And I'm very proud of that. JR, thank you for your work there. Uh, you've done an outstanding job of, of taking the lead on that and really pushing us out in the forefront uh, as a music education uh, community. And so congratulations for your work there. Thank you for that. Uh, board members, also in your package, you will see a note from uh, the Sons of the American Revolution. I put that in there just simply to let you know uh, this group has helped provide um, some of our classroom flags for us. We, uh, we had about 50 classrooms that did not have a, a, just a normal flag for, for daily operations, and uh, they approached us early in the fall, uh, or I guess late in the fall actually, and uh, asked us to identify classrooms that needed those flags, and they provided the brackets and the flags for those. Uh, so there's a communication piece from them, just so you know what group did that. We're thankful to them uh, for taking care of that for us. We'll move on into director's report. Uh, as you know, this uh, this is the last week that we have before TCAP testing starts in uh, in our system and across the state. Uh, we are anxiously awaiting uh, those dates. It is a uh, there's a calendar on our website, and I believe each of you have been given a calendar this evening to uh, to see the the amount of testing, uh, the days of testing, and uh, what our students and teachers will be going through the next uh, week, two weeks. 
Uh, it is a very stressful time for both students and, uh, and teachers alike, and I will say directors of schools as well. Uh, it is a time where um, we use this as an opportunity to uh, show and demonstrate the skills that have been learned all through the year, and we know it has been a long year. Uh, we are certainly not afraid of accountability in any way, in any shape, uh, but we do have high expectations for our students and our staff during that period of time, but yet at the same time, I know it's very stressful for uh, them and their families. Particularly, I would say, uh, with the, uh, the contingencies that the legislature has placed upon some students and families. And uh, I know there's still some bills before the legislature that we're watching very closely, um, whether they may make some modifications or whether they actually may extend that to fourth grade as well as third grade. So uh, there's still a lot going on in our, school leg our state legislature at this point in time. Uh, we did have an opportunity to take advantage of the eclipse today, and some of our students did that from school. And we're very proud of teachers that uh, designed and planned lessons to, to take uh, advantage and teach their students there. And several of our parents also took advantage of taking their students to, uh, to their own places. And we did provide, a, uh, we did provide excused absences for uh, folks who uh, took advantage of that as long as they were in attendance at a half day. And so uh, again, we'll get an attendance update on that from them. Um, last announcement that I had is we are continuing to finalize and work on uh, finalizing our budget expense parts and we'll be working on the revenue parts and uh, I guess for, uh, for publication purposes uh, we are going to have a special call board meeting for the purpose of reviewing uh, bids and we will also take a quick look uh, at some budget work uh, next Monday evening the 15th at 6 p.m. will be uh, in the room next door. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. All right, so we'll move on. Is there any old business to come before the board at this time? Any new business? And we will move on to comments by board members. Mr. Rice? Didn't have much other than a saying, you know, Dr. Week said, and I think some other people said, the testing that's coming up has been, a, seems to be the last several months hear a lot about testing and as if our students and our staff don't have enough pressure on them it seems to be magnified with what's going on in our political environment and so if you're thinking about all you uh, in that process in the last 60 days we're going to have budget meetings and several meetings so it's a uh, school's winding down and no kids are excited but uh, a lot of things going on in the next 60 days so i'll be thinking about all of our staff thank you sir thank you miss hogan I think I'm good. All right, thank you. Josh? Uh, just to echo Mr. Rice, good luck, teachers, students, everybody next week, next coming weeks. I know it's a stressful, hectic time, especially here at the end of the year, but um, you know, just hope our students get plenty of sleep, eat good, all that good stuff. <coughs> I hope everybody else has a good rest of the week leading up to this gauntlet. I know the rest of mine at work might not be that productive because I'm going to be watching the Masters with one eye and working with the other probably, but uh, just we'll be thinking about y'all in the coming weeks. Thank you. Mr. White? Uh, Mike should have brought this up in no business. Have we talked to our mowers about taking care of that extra land we have up there? We probably need to get some grass on that just so we don't have erosion. Uh, just a thought. Uh, yeah, we've heard over the last three months, two months, how terrible some things are and, and this, that, and other. Uh, it was wonderful to see all the great things that are going on in this county uh, with all these uh, students who are here. Uh, I don't think they would appreciate some of the things being said to them that were said to some of us. Uh, testing goes be politically correct, yeah. Uh, no, I don't. don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> it looks like our our legislature is not going to give any relief until they get what they want. Uh, I ask that parents attack legislatures with, say this carefully, mail and phone calls <laughs> uh, to let them know enough's enough. Uh, we have some kids that's going to go through three weeks of testing. And that's ridiculous, uh, just totally ridiculous. So 
Maybe somebody will run that understands that one day, and I'm going to hush now. And I did say attack with letters and phone calls. <laughs> Mr. Major? Well, I just thought it was kind of overwhelming and what was going with all the people that were here. And so glad Ms. Cook's here tonight, too. But with all the administrators and, and with all the parents and the teachers that were here and with all the students and what I was seeing in that, and I, I still remember from having one that was an FFA, uh, that's a lot of extra time that people put in on top of just, just even y'all being here tonight, everybody that's here. That's a lot of extra time that uh, I'm sure everybody's got a lot of other things going on in their life. And so we are just so blessed with, I just think we're just, we've got to be the best county anywhere. But anyway, there's a whole lot of students that want a lot of big things and it, and it's because they're gifted and they're talented, but it's because there's a whole lot of people that's pushing behind them and helping them and pulling them along. So anyway, just want to say thank you to all of y'all in this room and all the teachers and the parents and the, the, all the other staff that's taken the time to invest it in, in our future, and that's our students. Yeah. And uh, I'll just say I'm praying for all our students and staff for the next few weeks with all the tests. Uh, I know it's a uh, high stress. Uh, my people in my work, we've got one or two tests they have to take, and the amount of stress and prep we put into that for adults. So I just can't imagine what it takes to get kids through three weeks of testing like this. Um, and tonight, seeing all our students that have gone above and beyond, it always amazes me that for every one student, we have four or five people here to see that one student, and that's the support structure that makes these students able to succeed. Our teachers and staff do great, but we build on the foundations these students' homes give us. And so I'm always appreciative to see those people here to celebrate their students' accomplishments, and I uh, just thank y'all for all y'all do, because we couldn't do it without the parents and loved ones supporting us along. So thank y'all. Uh, Dr. Weeks, do you have anything else? Uh, no, sir. Just well, I will add, Mr. White. You, you mentioned the coaches and the support and the leaders, Ms. White. You did as well. I, I'm very thankful for those individuals, and just to let you know, we'll be recognizing our coaches and our sponsors. Uh, that that'll come up in August. So you'll see uh, several of our, our our staff actually here, and we'll have some rewards for them as well. So that'll be coming up uh, first of the next year. That's fantastic. All right, board members. If we don't have anything else, we'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Motion by Mr. Jeff White. Stand adjourned at 722.